Hi everyone, uh, it has been quite a long time. So in my today's session, I'm going to cover about a distributed caching in ASP.NET Core using the Azure Redis cache. Okay, so let's start with it. So what is caching? Caching is a technique that can be used to store relatively stale data for faster retrieval when needed by the application. You can have two approaches to caching data in ASP.NET 6, okay? Or ASP.NET Core, I would say. Okay, the in-memory cache and distributed cache. So, caching is a technique that can be used to store relatively stale data. So, the data is static in nature or it changes very rarely, okay? Only such kind of data basically you can put into cache so that its retrieval can be faster. Caching can dramatically increase an application's performance and scalability by minimizing resource consumption and the effort needed to generate the content. Caching is a good choice when your data is relatively stable. That is, it works best with a data that rarely changes and takes time to construct. Okay, even if that data changes very rarely, but when it comes to construction of such data, it is very complex process and takes a lot of time. Okay, so for such cases, caching is the best solution. We should never blindly depend on the cache data and there should always be a fallback mechanism. Yes, because there are some times even a rarely changing data also changes sometimes. So you should not blindly depend on whatever data you get from the cache. So you should have a fallback mechanism. Moreover, we should critically refresh the data stored in the cache so that it doesn't become stale. Okay, so it's like a keeping cache data for a specific period of time. Okay, you should not keep it forever. You have to keep it for a short period of time and always keep it refreshing. So you get it from a data store and again you put it into cache for some time. Okay, that's what they are saying. So this way, uh, even if you are keeping it for some time, so you are basically after some specific period of time or amount of time, you are basically performing that computation and getting the latest data into the cache. Okay. Okay, what is in-memory caching? The in-memory cache is the most basic cache <laughs> and resides in your web service memory. Okay, ESP.NET Core provides the basic caching mechanism by making use of the iMemory cache contract or interface. Okay, so this mechanism serves the basic needs of caching but will not answer the enterprise-grade software running on multiple servers. Okay, some of the major limitations are, I think most of us uh, have used this iMemory cache. Okay. This approach is good when you have only one uh, instance of your application server is running, but when there are multiple servers, then it won't work out. So let's see the limitations. The sticky session overhead for large scale apps running on multiple application servers, there will be an overhead to maintain sticky sessions. A sticky session is a mechanism in which we make all requests from a client to go to a same server, which is impractical for large enterprise grade softwares because we have load balancing. Nowadays, the technology has evolved like anything, especially when it comes to Kubernetes. Uh, whenever one particular server instance is too much overloaded, basically it load balance to the other pods running in the same node. Okay, in the secondary node of your Kubernetes, one example I'm giving. Okay, so in such uh, scenarios, right, this kind of sticky sessions won't work out. This in-memory cache won't work out because that in-memory cache is only there on that specific server only or the web application which is running. So you can't share it across the machines or across the servers. Server resource consumption, if not properly configured, it may consume a lot of the app server resources, especially memory. Yeah, if, for example, if you are maintaining uh, active user session, basically. Okay, so uh, let's uh, imagine a feature, uh, active user session feature. So, and also concurrent user session feature, uh, I would say. So you have to check whether a user is concurrently, is trying to concurrently log in into multiple browsers or multiple machines. So in such cases, user base is always huge, millions of users. So millions of users concurrency status, you can't put into your application, web application server's memory, okay? It will basically sabotage a lot of memory and make your server slow, okay? So that's the example. If due to some reason the app server went down, then we will end up in losing all cache data. Very, very important point, guys. Okay. So due to some reason, if your app service went down, okay, or suppose you are doing some installation, okay, or you are doing some release process, okay. So in such cases, if you are pushing a new build or, okay, uh, you are making a new release. So what happens? Your app server will basically go down for some amount of time. And during that time, you will lose all your cache data. Okay. 
so these are some limitations of in memory caching that's why we go to the distributed caching what is distributed caching okay unlike other caching strategies where your cache data resides on an individual web server a distributed cache is shared by several application servers often managed independently of the application server that use it okay it's a separate server itself your cache itself is a separate server here a distributed cache may provide a greater scale out than an in memory cache moreover it can significantly improve the performance scalability and responsiveness of an asp.net core application or any kind of web application you would say when your cache data is distributed the data is consistent across servers restarts and application deployments there is no threat of losing your data even if your web server okay your web application server restarts because it's on a separate machine itself your cache itself is on a separate machine the i distributed cache interface pertaining to the microsoft extensions caching distributed namespace represents a distributed cache to manipulate the data stored in the distributed cache we can make use of this following methods again there are a lot of implementations provided for this contract okay so it's up to us which one we would like to use so what we will do we will go with the default uh, yeah the i distributed cache mechanism which is provided by redis when we make use of the redis libraries that i'm going to show you soon so these are the methods get synchronously gets your uh, cache item or get async which gets asynchronously basically so both the variations are there to retrieve items from the distributed cache based on ski okay to store items into the distributed cache set set async refresh or refresh async to refresh an item in the distributed cache remove or remove async to delete an item from the distributed cache cache expiration one important concept same thing applies to in memory caches also and for the distributed caches also we can also implement cache expiration strategies in our application uh, a cache expiration strategy is used to specify how and when the data residing in the cache will expire the two ways in which you can implement the cache expiration okay absolute expiration this denotes that a maximum time period to store data in the cache this is really good when you are rarely changing data if it, even if it changes after some amount of time you basically once again construct that data and keep it into your cache so this denotes uh, that the maximum time period to store data in the cache once this time elapses the redis okay or any distributed cache deletes it automatically all its keys and corresponding data sliding expiration this denotes the maximum time period to store a piece of data when the application is not consuming the data so sliding expiration is something like this for 25 seconds you set a 25 seconds of sliding expiration means even within that 25 uh, seconds of expiration time even if nobody is accessing still it will reside on your distributed cache okay so that's the sliding expiration so if somebody accesses within that uh, 25 seconds period again it will be extended by one more uh, 25 seconds period basically but uh, usually uh, with this implementation usually it won't extend by another 25 seconds only thing is that it will be available during that sliding exp expiration that's it okay uh, any cache item which you are storing cannot be kept above your absolute expiration so this thing we have to remember if it is 30 seconds means within 30 seconds okay you can basically access the data and you can set the sliding exp expiration less than this absolute expiration if you are keeping it for 30 seconds absolute expiration then set the sliding expiration as 5 seconds so even if within 5 seconds nobody uh, access the data still it will reside on your server or okay. uh, distributed cache basically so that's the concept so what is redis now there are a lot of uh, tools or a lot of such uh, softwares are available in order to uh, store your data on distributed uh, cache so one such uh, software is redis basically so what is redis redis remote dictionary server okay the name itself says remote dictionary server is an open source high performance distributed data store available for commercial and non commercial use to store and retrieve data in your applications redis supports several data structures such as hashes lists sets sorted sets bitmaps etc used primarily as a database cache or message broker okay so you will notice only neg negligible performance overhead when reading or writing data using redis redis is an excellent choice if your application requires large amount of data to be stored and retrieved and a memory availability on a web app server is an issue yes okay 
so always remember distributed cash is an option when the cached item needs to be shared across multiple web app servers and the cached data whatever you are saving is basically very huge in nature okay for example checking uh, the concurrent login status of the users and then again uh, one more example is being the conversation state of your Azure chatbot okay so some things which are very huge and needs to be accessed very quickly so this kind of data right or structures you can basically save into distributed caches so how to use distributed redis cache in asp.net code very simple in order to make use of distributed redis cache in asp.net core we need two packages which is microsoft.extensions.caching.stackexchange.redis and then stackexchange.redis library these two libraries are required ones okay so let's go through the code now so i have created a small web api asp.net core web api uh, redis example so i have added the package references through uh, manage nugget packages console so you can right click over here and you can go to this manage nugget packages okay so through here i have basically added the latest version of the libraries uh, both uh, microsoft extensions dot caching dot stack exchange and then stack exchange dot redis basically okay so now let's move on to the usage in the program.cs basically what i'm doing look at this block of code okay or this particular method basically method call you would say so builder.services.add exchange redis cache so this is basically coming from your uh, library package we have added to our project that is microsoft extensions caching stack exchange redis okay so this is coming this particular extension method is coming from that library so how are we configuration it gives us the option so option dot configuration so basically you need to set the configuration the configuration is nothing but the connection string to your redis cache okay again i'm making use of azure redis cache and uh, in order to uh, yeah in order to first implement the azure redis cache in our application first of all you have to go to the azure portal and you have to create a azure redis cache for yourself okay you can refer this uh, on msdn basically they have explained very well okay how to create a azure redis cache in azure portal so i have already created and uh, i have an um, resource up and running for me and i have a connection string also okay so option dot configuration is basically a string value which takes your uh, redis cache connection string so i have created uh, in my app settings uh, in the app settings file basically i have created a setting called redis which contains my connection string so ideally do remember this kind of connection string should always go to azure keywords basically okay you should keep this kind of connection strings in the keywords that is the safest place you should not keep it into uh, app setting files of your uh, web api project this is for example uh, just a example i'm taking that's why i have kept into app settings file okay so builder.configuration get value get the redis connection string and then option.instance set it to master so master is the instance name for by default uh, you will be pointing to the master instance of your redis cache so that's all about the configuration uh, for integrating redis cache into your application okay so once you have done with this now how to use the redis cache okay as i already given a hint what you have to do is first of all you must have i distributed cache okay you must have a reference to i distributed cache so this will be injected by the dependency injection okay so it will basically inject an instance of i distributed cache or a implementation of i distributed cache so that you are going to set through your uh, constructor the controller constructor so cache will be available over here i will show you what kind of class it has created soon and then very simple stuff i have done what i am doing is i have a get method okay i have a get method so what i'm going to do using that cache under underscore cache dot get async i have a, i'm going to check is there any item or any cache entry by the key name products okay so what i will do i will call a async method get async products by key name products so then i will check okay data as a byte array i will check if its count is greater than zero 
okay yes if it is greater than there is zero and if there is a data basically okay then what I'm going to do is yeah what I'm going to do is uh, very simple first I will take it into a serialized data first I will convert it to a string utf8 I will make use of encoding dot utf8 dot get string okay then I will pass that uh, byte array and I will get the serialized data which is in terms of string now a JSON data over here then JSON serializer dot serialize deserialize into a list of products okay so this way I will get that products and I will return a response of okay with Product response OK, uh, status code as OK, is data from cache true? Yes, I'm getting it from there. I will assign the products collection, and then a message data retrieved from Redis cache, and then the timestamp. Okay. Okay. Second scenario if it is not there in the cache, okay, in that case, what I'm going to do is I have an object created. I have basically created a collection or a list of products and assigned a hard coded value. So for that collection, I'm going to serialize it into a JSON string okay and then I will convert that JSON string to a byte array using encoding dot get utf dot get bytes here I got the get string here I'm doing a get bytes now because I am serializing it and then I will set the expiration okay the distributed cache entry options okay so how we set expiration in a distributed cache we make use of this class distributed cache entry options so I will set an absolute expiration relative to now or the current time instance okay so if you are if you are putting an uh, entry into your cache then the time you put that entry into your cache that time will be considered and 30 seconds will be added okay so for 30 seconds this item will be there in the cache and sliding expiration I have set as 25 or you can make it as 5 also shouldn't be a problem and then underscore cache dot set async products okay with the key name products I'm passing that uh, data as a byte array and then I'm passing the expiration okay and then I'm returning the product response in this case it is not from cache it's not coming from the cache and yeah the timestamp very simple program guys okay so I am I am basically showing here an example of getting data as your byte array basically but there is one more implementation which is called uh, get string okay string get and string set implementation i think that will come as part of the connection multiplexer class that i will show you soon but let's have a look at this now yeah so i have started my web server it is up and running on my local so when i execute the get call execute so my breakpoint came here so as I have already executed this once you as I already executed this one so I would you would see that now when I do underscore cache dot get async there is already a data in the cache by key product so okay it's deleted it seems great okay yeah so it tried to get products but it is what it was not there so it came over here it will serialize the data and then it will convert to a byte array set the expiration okay and then underscore cache set async okay and you continue now it put it into the cache okay now if I execute it once again see I got the response status code 200 if I run it once again okay Okay, still it is going to here. That means still that data is available into the cache. And yes, I got the response. So the data is not available in Redis cache. So let's put it into Redis cache now. Let's try that. So yeah, now I ran the program. So what I did is basically I increased my absolute expiration relative to timeout to 60 seconds. That is one minute and kept sliding expiration to 25 seconds. So when I run the program, can you see now the data is retrieved from the Redis cache. Okay. Now the value is coming as true. Okay. If you see is data from cache, it is sending true. Okay. So, so if I run it once again, Let's put a breakpoint. Let's see. So if I run it and if I go through this, no. Now 
60 seconds elapsed so it removed it from the cache okay so it is once again creates and uh, it will once again create that cache entry and sets the expiration and now it will send the response now this time the data is not available in redis cache because 60 seconds were elapsed that's why the value is false is data from cache is false now if i run it once again i should get a value of true okay so let's run this yes now the data retrieved from the redis cache okay now if i leave it for another 60 seconds redis will automatically remove that entry this entire the json data itself whatever cache entry we had added right that entire entry itself will be removed from the cache okay so that's all about the caching uh, distributed uh, caching in asp.net core using redis okay so you can make use of the method remove also okay so simply on your underscore cache dot remove async and you pass the key that should basically remove that uh, cache entry whenever you want basically so you can programmatically also you can remove it okay so that is also uh, possible but most of the time if you set this kind of uh, expiration policy right the system itself will take care of uh, removing such entries okay over the some period of time but if you think there is some object which is not there in the system itself and for such data there is no point of maintaining uh, uh, cache entry in your uh, distributed cache then yes you can make use of the explicit call to remove async method okay that will do does the job for you okay so this is one approach okay so this is the recommended approach basically so if you want to make use of the distributed redis cache always use these packages okay the two packages i shown over here the stack exchange packages okay and register using your builder services okay pass the connection string instance name and then make use of this i distributed cache variable okay or the interface basically so make use of this particular i distributed cache uh, service i would say and using its instance the dependency injected instance you perform all cache operations okay so do remember this i distributed cache instance whenever it gets a connection multiplexer object right it is already it is already a, a lazily created object it is single threaded so no need to worry about it okay because uh, the stack exchange team has already taken care of all these stuffs so no need to worry about the boiler plate code and also no need to dispose this object also it will be automatically disposed so implementation has been provided by the stack exchange itself okay so do remember this is the best approach i see some people write their own service basically it's called i redis cache service and they provide the similar implementation something like this guys don't do that uh, i think most of the time we are involved with getting or setting the cache entries right i think this particular built in uh, implementation whatever is available will suit most of our requirements and it basically take care of all the boilerplate scenarios associated with your connections okay so do remember this so i would always prefer to make use of this interface and uh, its respective concrete implementation to deal with distributed caches okay guys so that's all uh, about distributed caches now let's move on to the next topic there are some issues some configurations related to this so i will start with that and yeah and meanwhile i want to show you what object i received over here i think that one is missing let me show you quick mm, so yeah as i told right it is always a better practice to make use of the inbuilt types provided by stack exchange and microsoft provided interfaces which is i distributed cache so if you see through dependency injection i'm receiving a cache and if you see the concrete implementation it is coming from stack exchange redis dot redis cache impl okay so this particular class provided by stack exchange takes care of all the boilerplate scenarios no need to do anything extra okay just make use of this class in very rare scenarios you can make use of you can create your own service or very custom service which deals with a very different kind of data okay very rare scenarios you have to make use of that but this will suffice most of our requirements okay guys so i will stop this service also we can check what are the various other methods available i think you can set string you can get string also so let me check that also quickly just for your information yeah 
see the way how you basically set and get a binary data right in the same way you can set string also directly okay that is also available you can basically what you can do is instead of converting it to bytes just take the json serializer dot serialize which represents a string json data and using this method sorry method you set that string as your cache entry okay so that is also a good approach so basically you can avoid this one more step of converting to the bytes basically or the binary data so there are two scenarios sometimes you have to deal with string data and sometimes you have to deal with the binary data because binary binary data extraction and uh, yeah extraction and saving is much faster basically or binary data processing is much faster compared to string data so that's why both the approaches they have given so it's up to us what we would like to make use of okay based on scenario you can make use of that okay guys so i wanted to discuss the next part but the video will be very bigger so i'm going to explain some of the common errors faced with redis cache in the next video okay thank you for listening guys and have a nice day Okay, yeah.